Hello everybody, Eternal Flame here, and today we are here to talk about the one fight, the one fight we never got to see that was wasted potential that so many people wanted to see other than most of the Yuta fans, which that fight, you already know what it is, Hikari vs. Urame. Now this video is going to be a little bit more difficult to do in comparison to the rewriting Kashimo vs. Sakuna type of video, mainly because those two fights had fundamentally different problems. Kashimo vs. Sakuna was just a bad looking performance for Kashimo. However, there was a fight we could work off of and base it off of. However, Hikari vs. Urame only has a few snips of a fight in comparison to Kashimo vs. Sakuna, which is just a bad performance for Kashimo. Now, I'm not saying Kashimo did bad against Sakuna, I'm just saying it looks like he did bad. I do think Kashimo actually did good. I need to make this clear before the Kashimo fans come after me again. However, before I even get into the fight, I do need to talk about one thing that I know a lot of people think of what this fight would be, which is just that people think that this fight would just be a rehashed version of Kashimo vs. Akari, mainly because it's just Punch Kick Guy versus a guy with elemental powers, and now we have Punch Kick Guy versus a person with ice powers, so of course it's gonna be similar, right? Wrong. In my opinion, these fights would be completely different from each other for one simple reason. While Kashimo, yes, he does have lightning powers and his elemental powers, he could not use them anywhere near as freely as Urame could. Like, think about it, Kashimo's only real lightning powers that he could actually utilize was the stun effects, which has no effect on Hikari whatsoever, and the lightning bolts which he needs to charge through hand-to-hand -hand combat. And compare this to what Hikari vs. Urame would actually look like. In my opinion, Hikari vs. Urame is probably more comparable to Sakuna vs. Jogo, or Mahito vs. Yuji. Especially Yuji vs. Mahito, where there's one opponent who has extreme amounts of versatility and extreme amounts of things they can do with their powers, as well as ways they can be creative against someone who has high amounts of physical strength, just outright better stats than the other opponent, but they have to get close to them because they only have close quarters combat. Now, as a note, I'm not going to make this fight exactly like Mahito vs. Yuji for obvious reasons, because Hikari does have a bit more versatility than Yuji at that point, as well as the fact that Urame also just has outright a different ability from Mahito. However, this entire section of the video was just to discuss with people who genuinely think that this fight has little to no potential, which, no, I very heavily disagree with you, especially because of how much creative freedom that Urame has with their abilities. Even if you don't want to grant Hikari things like Curse Energy Projection, you don't think he's capable of that, Urame still has so much they are capable of, and Hikari having a fight against that can lead to a really cool fight. However, now we're going to work from the ground up. We're going to actually make this fight, and how I would have a panel for the manga, as well as how I would have the fight work. Of course, this is going to be more of a background fight, it's not really going to take the forefront, mainly because the entire job will be Hakari fighting against Urame and holding them back, so you're not all going to get it all in bursts. Instead, of the way that I would section out is basically in between every single smaller battle that we got, because you can effectively split the Sakuna battle up into several smaller battles, in between every time a new opponent ends up showing up, or basically a new battle segment ends up starting, you would get about one chapter of Hikari vs. Urame, and then it's going to go back to the main cast, basically to show what Hikari and Urame are doing in the same time, and to show why they are both not interfering with the battle happening itself. So basically, in order to get a timeline, it would be one chapter after Higuruma vs. Sakuna, one chapter after Yuji and Yuta vs. Sakuna, one chapter after Maki vs. Sakuna, one chapter after the group was jumping Sakuna and Yuji had landed basically his Black Flash Barrage on Sakuna, one chapter after Yuji and Toto were battling against Sakuna as well as the entire Gojo domain thing with Yuta and Gojo's body was happening, and then the final chapter of the battle would be Yuji's domain, where Urame and Hikari would finally end the battle. So yes, Hikari is not going to join in the battle against Sukuna, and Urame is not going to join in the battle either. I don't think that should be a surprise to anybody. I'm also kind of curious if you guys would section the battle a bit differently than the way I'm going to section it, but you guys can tell me that in the comment section down below. Now finally, while I do have ways of how I'm going to improve both Hikari and Urame for this battle to actually make it feel like the time skip mattered for Hikari, and actually to show more of Urame's abilities, I'm not going to explain it right now, however I will explain them as the battle itself goes on. Anyway, I am going to keep the first chapter of this fight basically the exact same, where basically we're going to see how Hikari vs. Urame is going, while at the same time of Higuruma doing domain expansion on Sakuna. That's basically going to go the complete same, as now we're going to move on to the real second chapter of this fight. So without further ado, let the battle begin. As Urame finished her declaration after realizing that Hikari wasn't human, so they were going to fight them as if they were a monster just like Sakuna. This was when Urame summoned their Ice Ball, and out from the Ice Ball, a total of four humanoid-like creatures began to rise out, four Shikigami that belonged to Urame. The first being a rather large creature, one that towered over Hikari and was almost taller than Sukuna, a rather brutish creature that had a large amount of physical strength. Another being a humanoid that was carrying a bow and arrow, standing a bit more in the background. Another was an Ice Shogun that was giving a cold and blank stare to Hikari. And finally, there was something that Hikari couldn't really fully make out, which was a person that was surrounded in mist. All he could really see was a mask. 
and Akari was quite confused by this. After all, based on everything he heard, Urame never used this before. Urame didn't have access to these powers, they only had access to ice manipulation and ice creation. Before, Urame then told Hikari that back in the Heian era, they had only used this technique against a total of 50 sorcerers, and only three people, counting Ryomen Sukuna, was actually able to live against the Ishikigami. And before Hikari could make a remark, an ice arrow had pierced right through his arm, resulting in his arm falling to the ground. Hikari was just barely able to react to it, but he wasn't able to move out the way thanks to being caught off guard. However, fortunately, Hikari was prepared for the next attack, as he just narrowly lifted up his arm as well as his regenerated arm in order to block the punch from the Brute. Even though he was able to block the punch, he was sent flying back. And while he was sent flying, a slash would hit him in the back, a slash from the Shogun. And before Hikari could regain his footing properly, a mist surrounded all of them, leading to several ice spikes directly from Urame, firing into Akari and landing on his body. This was then followed up by the narrator saying, Urame's curse technique is Frost Khan. However, their family had placed a binding vow on the technique. While every snowflake came from the same evaporated water, no snowflake was the same. So of every generation of the family that died, they became the next snow. New Shikigami for the next to use. Shikigami technique, the Four Winters. But in spite of these odds, Hikari could feel himself getting pumped up, as he activated his domain expansion once more. The battle would begin with Hikari fighting against all five of the opponents inside of his domain at once, and he was just barely managing to hold his own. A better handle on their moves and a better handle on how they would fight, but even with that being said, he was taking a good amount of damage. If it wasn't for the fact that Hikari was in his domain right now, he would probably be dead. Hikari had to use everything to defend himself. Whether it was using the doors or the balls, he needed to deflect their attacks and he couldn't let them hit him. But even with that being said, he was hit by several of the attacks. He needed to hope that his jackpot bonuses were going to save him, and they just were barely able to work against this type of opponent. This was nothing like Kashimo at all. While Kashimo was certainly definitely strong, it was only one opponent, unlike the five opponents he is currently up against. However, right as the Shogun landed a blow on his side, causing quite a bit of damage to his side, he was able to get the jackpot, but this wasn't any ordinary jackpot either, no, this was the 777 jackpot. As Akari's wound healed before he punched the Shogun straight in the face, doing a heavy amount of damage while his domain had broken as a result of him getting the jackpot. Urame realized in that moment that this was his trump card, which did make an entertained smile rise on them, as they were now very excited to continue on this battle. Of course, Urame did have one more trick up their sleeve, but they wanted to keep that as a secret for now. As out from the Mashi Kigami, several ice-based chains began to fly at Hikari, with Hikari able to dodge them with a level of ease that he wasn't able to do so before. However, while Akari was mid-air, the Berserker attempted to attack Akari by punching him straight down into the ground. It didn't matter how many times Akari could activate their domain, there was going to be at least one opening that they could take advantage of, or at least that was what the Berserker was going for. However, the Berserker was interrupted midway, as a rainbow door appeared around the Berserker and closed in on him before slamming him down into the ground hard. With Akari explaining that he had made a binding vow with his domain, where he wasn't able to use the doors or the balls in any of the other modes for jackpot, however in the 777 jackpot, he was able to use them. And through that he ended up getting another amp on top of that because he had just revealed his own curse technique to Urame even more. This resulted in the door that was currently surrounding the Goliath getting much tighter than it was before, as it then suddenly snapped his body in half, breaking the Goliath in half. And while Akari was starting to get confident that he could win, Urame blew some ice, resulting in the Goliath's body being put back in two, as Urame said, I wouldn't get too confident now, you only have this power for four minutes, so don't waste it. This though told Akari exactly what he needed to do to win. He needed to take out Urame, after all, Urame could heal their Shikigami. However, doing that was much easier said than done. After all, now Hikari was fighting off against five opponents, with one of them able to heal the other four opponents as well. This was just going to be significantly more difficult, and on top of all of this, Hikari still felt like Urame was holding something back, but he couldn't tell what. However, the battle was interrupted just for a slight moment as the both of them could hear and sense a black flash being used in the distance on Maki. Hikari then would have taken that chance to rush towards the Mashikigami, summoning a large pinball before punching it forward to launch it at the Mashikigami. At the same time, Hikari activated the door around the Archer Shikigami, closing around in an attempt to chop them in half. 
However, the Brute was able to move in front of the ball and catch it with their hands, shielding the mass Shikigami in the process. And it was getting pushed back by his power, but it was still able to hold it off, while both the Shogun and Urame went for Hikari to try and do a relentless assault and take the offense. Urame hopping high into the air and utilizing Ice Fall, while at the same time the Shogun slashed at Hikari. Hikari realized that the Shogun wouldn't actually take damage from the ice either, at least not from Urame's ice. Hikari, however, took advantage of the immortality he had, as the ball flew towards the Shogun's back while Hikari went for a punch on the Shogun. The Shogun was more than fast enough to cut off Hikari's arm, but that arm just as quickly regenerated and punched the Shogun in the face while the ball slammed into the Shogun's back as Hikari was able to jump high into the air, making another door behind him and having the Shogun be slammed against the door. And with that impact, the Shogun was turned to dust, completely dead. Urame glared for a moment as the other three Shikigami prepared themselves for combat. Hikari was going to be harder than Urame had expected as the ball and door faded. The archer would then hop high up into the air, going onto one of the rooftops generating a rather large ice arrow, before beginning to focus, as at the same time the Goliath would punch the ground resulting in a large burst of ice spikes being launched out from the ground in Hikari's direction. However, Hikari had a counter to this, as his counter was to punch one of the icicles coming at him, breaking it, and he jumped into the air and threw the ice spike down towards the Goliath, summoning up a large ball to smack it into the icicle to launch it at an even faster speed with even more force. While the Goliath was just barely able to catch it, the mass entity would go in and rush at Hikari as several chains made of ice would rush at him. Hikari was in the zone right now, and he was able to deflect each and every single one of them before he got an idea, as a wider smile formed on him as he grabbed two of the chains before spinning in the air and throwing the Shikigami down, resulting in it shattering as well from the massive impact and a crater being formed on the ground. At the same time, the Goliath took the chance to close the distance and punch Hikari in the face, punching him through one of the buildings. The Goliath had a large crystal rise up from the ground for it to jump off as it rushed towards Hikari while slamming his fist down on him. Hikari backflipped out the way, just barely able to dodge it. However, with the dodge, the Goliath landed the punch on the ground and a large spike launched out towards him. But Hikari wanted to take advantage of his immortality, as he decided to let the ice spike hit him and impale right through his gut. But even with that, it didn't stop him, as he moved through the ice spike and punched the Goliath in the face. But the Goliath wasn't stunned, as it was used to Hikari's immortality by this point, and it also landed a punch on Hikari at the same time, as Hikari pushed the ice spike out of him, and the two were launched away from each other during their punches. But while Hikari was midair, he ended up pointing his hand towards the Goliath and creating another door around it. The Goliath though lifted up both of its hands in order to block the door, but this was exactly what Hikari wanted, as Hikari closed the distance as what looked like a massive amount of rainbow curse energy surrounded his fist. As Hikari had an insane expression rising on him, the true expression of a jiu-jitsu sorcerer, before he landed a black flash onto the Goliath, destroying it completely with just one hit. But even with the Goliath destroyed, the battle was not done yet. After all, there was still one more Shikigami left, the Archer, as a massive ice arrow was fired out from the Archer. This arrow was so massive that it was towering over the Shikigami several times over, and Rame had a smirk on them as they watched. This move was something that was very specifically modified out of inspiration from Lord Sukuna to make it that much more potent before it landed on the ground, causing a massive explosion of ice to freeze the area and a large chunk of this city. This technique was known as Sub-Zero Arrow. It had a simple purpose, to keep freezing over whatever was stuck inside of it until they died no matter how much RCT they had. There was one problem though, which was the fact that the arrow did not hit Hikari. It hit one of his massive pinballs he used to block as Hikari came down from the heavens, still in the zone, flying at the Shikigami before landing another black flash, this time on the archer and destroying it completely, as there was something else noticeable, which was as he was punching the Shikigami, the other side of his body was just finishing regenerating. While he did somewhat avoid damage from the ice arrow, he couldn't fully escape that massive attack's assault. As Akari could feel it, he only had one more minute of 777 jackpot, and then this time would be out, and he would need to fight against Urame directly. However, Urame was not done yet, as the ice orb returned to Urame with a grin forming, as Urame told him, Congrats, only 12 people have lived long enough to see this, and Lord Tsukuna is the only one who has won against this. The ice from the shards of the Shikigami began to melt. All of the ice attacks that Urame had used and that Shikigami had used had all melted, returning to that orb, before Urame then absorbed the orb, as Akari could feel a deep chill come off of Urame's body, before Urame then opened their hand as it showed a very small ice ball. 
and they crushed it, as suddenly the world shifted to look like it was covered in ice, with themselves and Akari inside of it, in the center of a frozen temple, as well as statues of frozen angels all around them, domain expansion, winter's eternity, as Akari suddenly felt several ice specks spawn inside of his body, over and over again, while at the same time Urami lifted up their hands and ice arrows began to form, all just as big as the what the archer had fired. Hakari, despite being in pain from these attacks, began to rush forward. His body would generate to keep up, but even this wasn't enough. As Urami began to rapid fire these attacks, ice chains to keep him down, while large arrows repeatedly hit him. Hakari was consumed within a wave of ice as Urame stared down with a sadistic grin. However, even with all that, Hakari's fever kept him going as he moved past the ice before landing a black flash on Urame. At the same time, he was missing his left leg, using a binding vow in that moment in order to sacrifice that left leg and give himself a burst in energy. However, something even more noticeable was the power of Hakari's regeneration. Even in this domain expansion, Hakari couldn't die. But even more pressing, a minute had passed, as Akari's jackpot faded before he reactivated his domain expansion once more. This would lead into a domain clash between the two beginning, but in this domain clash, Urame ended up giving up, as they could sense Sakuna had died. This ends up leading to the final chapter playing out the same way that it did, with Akari getting a jackpot and recovering his leg in the process. Now, I do hope this does satisfy your desire to see this fight happen. Of course, I did have some concepts in mind for what could be Rame's backstory, which I sprinkled in very heavily throughout this battle. If you guys do want to see me actually write out a backstory for Rame and Sakuna, I would be very much down to, but I want to see support in that in the comment section down below. I hope you all enjoyed this fight, and I hope you all have a good day. Now up next, I do want to spend some time talking about the sponsor to the channel, Fan Dominion, an old friend of the channel that has a ton of cool anime merch, especially on the JJK side of things, but cool merch overall. And if you're looking for something that looks stylish, something that you can wear out in public and not be called a weeb for, but at the same time be recognized by your friends for wearing something really cool, they have good things in store for you. Or are you looking for something to complete your cosplay with? Well, Fan Dominion has you covered, and don't worry, they aren't expensive at all. And on top of that, if you use my code both in the description as well as on screen now, you can get a 10% discount. Yep, that's right, a 10% discount. However, now I'm going to spend some time showing off their beautiful catalog. And if you like any of this merch and any of this merch looks awesome to you, remember our code EF10 and you'll be able to get a 10% discount. Anyways, I'm going to see you all later.